welcome to an air pistol video. This is a retro air pistol, or it's a uh, a vintage air pistol, historic air pistol. No, that's going to it's going a bit too far. From what I can gather, it is uh, either late 1960s, early 1970s, or it could be mid 1970s, or it could be late 1970s. So it's uh, yes, it's 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 within that area of time period. When I first got this, I was very excited to see it. Never seen anything like this before. I do have a Webley and Scott, uh, which was my dad's, and that's uh, from the 1980s. Okay, so as you can see, it comes in this lovely uh, blue box, and it's kind of got a leather texture to it. Don't know why. Maybe that's something the Germans liked back in them days. The first thing I noticed when I got this was two things. Firstly, was, wow, what great condition the pistol itself is in. It's in really good condition. Or so I thought initially. The blooming on it is, oh, the sheen, the, it's shiny. It just look, it looks great. Thing is it had been sitting in this box in storage for a very, very, very long time. Not sure how long, but long enough. That inside the box is foam. And this is also has foam in it. And the same things happened to the foam in this one as well. So I think that's just a thing that happens to foam, but when I finally took the gun out for the first time, and I was in awe at its splendor and beauty and sheen, I then flipped over to the other, the other side, the bit that had been resting on the foam, and yes, the foam has done some interesting things to it. I have managed to get some of it buffed back to, you know, factory-ish sheen, but yeah, it, it was a long process, and I had to sort of like figure out a process of getting that back. The bloom was still under there, so I don't think it had eaten away at anything. It had just like imparted like this weird residue all over it, and the residue just didn't want to come off. At best, it just looked like a, a smeared window. And at worst, it was, it was like, it was just like it was covered in like cake. So yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't too good. But we solved all that, and we got the gun shiny and nice and um, we decided not to store it back in the box again. Anyway, let's have a look at what we get inside this here box. So, once we move this out the way, we have a uh, cleaning rod. Very standard, most air guns, uh, air soft guns, and real guns come with a cleaning rod. Um, this cleaning rod, I don't use it. I, I use a, a BSA a modern cleaning rod because this one is full of foam. <laughs> bits of foam. You also get a little screwdriver. Handy dandy screwdriver, and I think this is primarily not for doing maintenance on it, I think this is more for a, a sight adjustment. And then there's this thing, the doorknob as I call it. Oh, and I hate this thing. I hate it with a seething passion. This is actually a cocking arm extendery thing in me, Bob. Now, what we do with this, as you can see, this is a brake action air gun. It's a piston, spring powered, sorry if I haven't mentioned that. And obviously, because it only has a tiny, tiny little barrel on it, it is quite tricky and quite difficult to cock by hand. And it's not anymore, the spring's a little bit weak in it, so I can cock it by hand. But yes, the idea of this, this here thing, this little knobbly thing, is you, you jam it, that, that metal round part, you jam it in the end of your barrel, just like that, and then you cock the gun. I don't really want to do it, but I'm going to do it. Now, can anyone see an issue with that? Because I can see a massive issue with it. And the biggest issue I can see is you're jamming metal. <laughs> you're jamming metal into the end of the barrel of your gun, and then you're like levering and pulling on it. The inside of the muzzle, it's not going to be doing it much good. So I don't like using that if I can get away with it. Yes, when I got this gun, it was not in firing order. Now, you could cock it, and you could dry fire it, but if you stuck a pellet in the barrel, the, the, the pellet would not leave the barrel, it would just stay sitting in there like a little git. The rifling is somewhat interesting, somewhat to be desired. Now the rifling in these old air guns, is, it's, more, it's more like the factory just drew the rifling on as opposed to it actually having a proper cutting rifling. And to be fair, air guns don't really need rifling at all. In fact, I'm not even sure why they started going with rifling for an air, air gun. But um, an air pellet, it's basically a shuttlecock. It's, it's a dart. It, you, it stay, it's self-stabilizing. So you can literally fire it out of a smoothbore and it's pretty damn accurate. So yes, the seals were all absolutely destroyed on this gun. 
So I had to create a new seal for it. But I couldn't find anywhere to buy a replacement seal for this particular uh, make and model of air gun. So what I ended up doing was fabricating my own. I went down to the local plumbing store and I went through the washers and I basically found a washer that roughly kind of fitted it. Didn't really. I had to stretch it a little bit. But that was the only one that would fit it. So I put that in. And that does work. It does seal it and I can now fire pellets and I can target shoot with it. The only trouble is it's not perfect. Now I haven't got a, uh, a measurer to measure the power and speed of the, of the pellet. I have got one, it just it doesn't work. It's one of those ones you stick on the end of the barrel. And I stuck it on the end of the barrel once and when I pulled the trigger it just shot it. <laughs> it shot it and it just blew up into pieces. I don't, don't know what I did wrong there but I did something wrong. <laughs> right or wrong, who knows? Anyway, let's see. This is the worst uh, air gun video ever. I'm not very good at these. This is the first kind of one that I've done of this so still learning. It's a model LP3 Luft Pistol air pistol. Pistolette! Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a pistolette. Is that a female pistol? Um, air Comprime. Now it's made in Germany. I always thought it was a Wolfer. Why have I got it in my head that it's a Wolfer? Is it the James Bond connection? Or does it actually say Wolfer on it somewhere? Let me have a look. No, it just says it's made in Western Germany. I'm guessing Western Germany. That was the free part of Germany. The Soviets did not control there, no. That's why we got good air guns out of it. So yes, that's uh, is about as much as I can think to say about this at the moment, until I get better at doing these kind of <laughs> videos. Do apologise. Um, I will do some of me shooting it. It's just, it's so late in the day at the moment, and I have to fire outside, I have to shoot, shoot it in the garden, and um, it's just too dark. The lighting's just too low now. So yeah, that's why I've got this bloody great spotlight lighting me up because it's just too dark in here, even with the, the light switched on. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, anything you know about these particular types of air pistol, let me know. That would be really good. Oh, and uh, another thing, the ergonomics of it, it only works um, right-handed. It's got a weird thumb thing, and you can only shoot it right-handed. So yes, unlucky lefties. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye.